What's up guys? We are back with another video and uh, we're going to talk about stress and uh, how it relates to weight gain. A lot of people say I'm so stressed I feel like I'm just gaining weight. Quite possibly could be the reason. <laughs> if your uh, nutrition is on point you still exercise but you're highly stressed. You do have an environment in your body that you just wants to store body fat, wants to give you energy. So we're going to talk about why. Um, let's go back to back in like our our ancestor days you know the cavemen and all this stuff the way that they had stress it was very it was very um, minute you know they'd wake up in the morning probably you know there's a lot of documentation on it and they probably just hang around for a little bit and if they were hungry they'd go hunting for their food they had to and that's where the fight or flight response comes into play with uh, when you're stressed. So back in the day, they would get stressed if they were just ready to go hunt their food, you know, uh, or if their food, like the, the animals that they were trying to hunt were coming after them. They either try and kill it, fight, or they run, you know, flee, flight, you know. And here's the thing with our bodies is that our bodies respond to stress in the exact same way. No matter if back in the day, like you're running away from an animal that's about to kill you, or nowadays where, you know, you're on your way to work, you get a flat tire, you're going to be late, get stressed out. You know, there's a slow driver in front of you and you got to get somewhere, you're all stressed out. You know, you spill your coffee on yourself. Like Just these little stressful situations compared to running away from an animal, our body responds the same way. And... That's kind of the problem we have nowadays, you know, because when we get stressed, there's, there's a few things that happen, but two major things that happen is that cortisol is released and then adrenaline is released from the adrenal glands. Okay, so what, what adrenaline does is it gives us immediate energy, right? It taps our stored energy so that we can have immediate energy, right, to either fight or run. We need immediate energy for that. So that's what adrenaline does. Cortisol's job is to replenish that energy that adrenaline has um, made available. So back in the day, they would be using that energy that adrenaline provided. They'd either fight the animal or they'd start running, whatever it was. So they'd use that energy, those calories. Nowadays, when we get stressed, by the way, we, which is chronic, nowadays we have daily stress. Well, we're stressed every single day, people. It, it's, it's insane. So, but nowadays, when cortisol is released and adrenaline is released, adrenaline gives us that immediate energy. But what do we do nowadays? Probably, you know, sit on our ass and eat some junk food <laughs> and add to the calories that cortisol has, uh, adrenaline has provided for us. We don't use any of it. So we gain weight. It, it's easy to see, you know, the, the, the reason adrenaline gives us those calories is so we can use them. And what we do nowadays is we eat to, to, to get rid of stress or try and bring it down. And what do we eat? Junk food. <laughs> I mean, you can't tell me you're stressed and all this stuff and you're like, oh, I'm going to go reach for a salad because I'm stressed. <laughs> Never happens. You know, it's because our body and our brains, they, they crave sweet and salty foods when we're stressed because then when you eat them, they, you re they release those feel-good hormones, right? You just had like some ice cream and stuff. You're just like, oh, okay, I'm so... You know, because you just you feel good because you ate it, but it's not helping your physique at all. <laughs> so the, the, the main thing we have to, to do when we're stressed is we have to use the energy you know, that cortisol is giving us. I, I mean, that adrenaline is giving us because if we don't, cortisol is going to store those those calories that adrenaline released because we don't use them. And then all the stuff you're eating because you're stressed is now going to get stored as fat too because you're just not using anything. And when we don't when we don't use any of that energy, what do you think happens to it? I mean, it just gets stores in our fat cells. You know, and the, what, and the thing with today, like I said, is that we're so stressed every day. We have constant elevated cortisol levels throughout the entire day. So when cortisol is elevated, our body doesn't respond well to the hormone leptin, which is produced by our fatty tissue, highly involved in the fat burning process. 
but also helps us control our hunger and makes us feel satiated. So while our cortisol, cortisol levels are elevated and we're not responding well to leptin, now we just keep eating and we never get that full, that full feeling because leptin is inhibited. So what do we do? We just keep eating and we keep adding the calories to our body, which we're just gonna store as fat, you know, because it's, there's just, there's, we don't do anything with it, you know? I mean, most of us experience chronic stress every single day, like I said, and that's a way of life, you know? So our cortisol levels are elevated all the time and, be, you know, because this, our body thinks we need extra fuel. Like we're stressed all the time, so the response, like I said, give us fuel, we need it now, fight or flight. You know, when we don't use this extra fuel, it just stores it around our midsection, which is even worse because that's where visceral fat comes into play. When you're highly stressed, you have a higher chance of storing those calories and fat as visceral fat, you know, which is the harmful fat around your organs and your stomach. So that's, it's just, we're, we're in a stressful stage <laughs> and uh, day and age where, you know, we just have constant elevated cortisol levels as well as, as well as adrenaline, but we don't use it. So it just gets stored. And, you know, when we're hungry, as when we're not, in, you know, responding well to leptin, we're not getting that satiating feeling, our blood sugar is usually low. So our brain sends a signal to the adrenal glands to release cortisol because it thinks we're in this stressful stage. We need to store calories. So it'll, cortisol will help maintain the sugar levels, blood sugar levels, and then insulin will help um, our cells absorb the, absorb the glucose. But... When we have that long-term stress every single day, you're late for work, you got bad news about a family member, you got, you know, you can't find your shoes in the morning, whatever it is, it doesn't matter. Insulin and cortisol remain elevated. So all that extra glucose that is tapped is just stored as fat and you gain weight. So it could very well possibly be that you're eating healthy and you're doing everything right, you're exercising, whatever, but you could possibly still not be losing fat. Or, or gaining weight because of just a highly stressful environment that you're just going through every single day. And what scientists are actually showing now is that they've done studies on, the, on our fat cells, the adipose tissue we have, and they're finding that our fat cells have special receptors for cortisol. So what that means is that if you look anywhere throughout the body, anywhere else, our fat cells will have the most receptors for cortisol than anywhere else. So it's no wonder we, you know, get that muffin top when you're stressed out. A lot of people claim that, right? They, they gain weight because they're stressed and it goes right to their belly. There's, there, there's another good reason for it, you know? Um, so when cortisol is elevated, our fat cells welcome more fat, you know, because they're so highly sensitive to cortisol. And it's like, oh, geez, like, I can't, you know, I can't contain my stress. I'm stressed all the time, you know? But... Then you're like, oh, if I gain weight, I need to start dieting. But what we're finding now along the research is that constant dieting can make cortisol increase by about 18%. So people are gaining weight and you're dieting, you're probably increasing cortisol even more because you're stretched like, shit, I'm dieting, I can't eat anything. You know, because that's, that's the mindset we have towards dieting nowadays. So you're actually increasing cortisol by doing that. I mean, it's, we're just like, we're basically just like killing ourselves with stress and we're just gaining weight because of it. And that that's... That's just how it works. You know, we're, we are meant to fight or flee, fight or flight, one of the other when we're stressed. Nowadays, we don't do any of that because when we're stressed, we go eat. <laughs> or when you're stressed, you go sleep or you're not using any of the energy that our body is providing. And then cortisol is just gonna do exactly its job. It's gonna, it's gonna replenish that energy. Whether you give it additional energy or not, it, it's just gonna store it again. And you know, stress is not just bad for fat burning for you know for weight gain um it's actually bad for for building muscle too so everyone who's involved in fitness or just your general health goals are to gain muscle and lose fat stress is just terrible to accomplish that you know because while cortisol is elevated testosterone is inhibited and testosterone is one of our main muscle building hormones in the male body, but also in the female body. Obviously, you know, females, you, you also have some testosterone to build muscle. That's why you can you can do that, but you can't build it to the extent that males do because obviously we have so much more. But when cortisol is elevated, testosterone is inhibited. So basically, you're gaining weight because you're stressed, cortisol is elevated, and you're inhibiting muscle growth. So 
you know, the more muscle you have, obviously the higher RMR you have, the amount of calories you burn every single day. If you can't build muscle and you're gaining weight, your RMR just keeps decreasing because the more fat cells you have, the lower your RMR usually because more of your body composition is fat than muscle. So it's just like, uh, it's just like a catch-22. It's like, shit, I need a little bit of cortisol to like keep, keep my blood sugar levels in check and all this. But then if I have too much, it's like a whole cascade of events happen and I'm just going to gain weight and I'm not even going to build any muscle. <laughs> you know, so what can we do? I'll give you my three quick tips on what you can do to reduce stress. Okay. And... I'm just going to, I'll just go over them really quickly because I actually brought them down for you too. I typed them up. Um, you know, I want to touch on, you know, one more thing as, as I'm talking about muscle building and stuff like that. I had to type a little bit down, but, you know, our muscles fuel, primary fuel is glucose. It's about our immediate energy. If you were to go to the gym and you're going to start working out, glucose would be tapped first for energy because it's easily attained and available for our body to use. Then it would tap fat. Lastly, protein, if it needs anything, if fat and glucose aren't available, tap your, you know, your muscle to get amino acids, convert those into glucose via gluconeogenesis, and then you'd be good. But that's the three steps it goes, glucose, fat, and then protein. So if our muscle's primary fuel is glucose in the beginning, it's a big reason we crave carbohydrates when we're stressed, okay? So our, because our body thinks we need to run or fight. And to do that, we need to use our muscles. So we crave carbs because, hey, Carbs is going to help me run or fight whatever I have to do, but we don't, we don't fight or run anymore, like I was saying. So the way we cope with stress is we just sit down and, you know, we open some cookies or ice cream, whatever, and we eat. So none of those calories that are released and that extra glucose that's available, we don't use it. So, you know, it's just, we, we're supposed to, but we just don't. And that's the big, the big downside these, uh, nowadays. So I'll tell you three quick tips on how to reduce stress. Number one is sleep. You know, sleep deprivation is a major, it's a major stressor for our body. If we don't get enough sleep, our body thinks something is wrong. And, you know, lack of sleep, it raises levels of ghrelin, you know, and that's our hormone responsible for hunger. So as we don't get enough sleep, now we're more hungry, so we eat more. And result, you gain weight. We, um, the originally we thought six hours was optimal. Now, Research is just blowing that out of the water. Like they're saying around seven to nine hours of sleep per night you need to not feel like this stressful feeling and stuff like that. And, you know, it's like if you can't get that amount of sleep, sneak in some REM naps, you know, like 20, 30 minute naps during the day where you can get tap into that REM cycle and still, you know, establish some some recovery and stuff like that. Number two is eat a balanced diet. Eat a, eat a healthy diet diet i mean it's just you know you if you eat breakfast make sure you eat lunch eat dinner if you can fit a few snacks in between there do that you know this, this helps keep your blood sugar stable um you know which in turn will you know damper the insulin production that you have in your body so your body won't be so readily ready to store fat as fuel and it'll help reduce cortisol levels so you know all controls appetite and your weight so sleep eat a healthy diet and what do you think number three is? It should be number one. I mean, I don't even know why I put them in this uh, <laughs> this this uh, order. But number one, number one, you know, in front of you know sleep and eating about it should be exercise. Exercise is just a potent stressor because when you go to the gym, the stress you are now feeling, whether it be from the entire day until you got to the gym, um, something that happened the, you know a day before. Uh, or when you get to the gym, the new stressor on your body is the resistance you're using to lift the weights. It's such, it's, it's just such a great way to just reduce that stress because it not only burns calories, helps you burn fat, but you know, it, it's, you know, when you move your body, you begin to produce just a, a cascade of just like biochemicals in your brain. You know, those feel good hormones, that dopamine you, they just released, so you feel accomplished. You feel like, wow, I did something. Like you, you kind of forget about the stress, and it controls insulin, you know, and blood sugar levels. So you're not, you're not so readily to store fat immediately when you're stressed. So, I'd say, for exercise, even something as little as walking helps reduce cortisol levels. So just pick something that you enjoy doing, and consistently do it. You know, this will help control your cortisol levels, help control your stress, and. You know, you might actually, you know, start 
start burning off some of uh, some of that fat that you gained through your <laughs> stressful uh, eating episodes. So uh, there are my three tips, right? Exercise, eat healthy, sleep. Sleep is sleep is huge. You gotta get you know as many hours as you can. You know, sleep deprivation is just terrible. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I hope it was informative, and I hope you can follow those three tips. You know, exercise, sleep, and eat a healthy diet, and you'll definitely help controlling controlling the cortisol levels. Another one you can do is you know decrease your caffeine intake because caffeine is shown to increase cortisol levels. Um, you know, so stop so much the coffee, you know, one or two cups a day is okay. But if you go overboard, caffeine would definitely be a culprit of increasing cortisol. So cut down on your caffeine too. And then I'll give you another one. So five tips. Just learn to relax. Learn to just let things go. Like, you know, you go with the flow, say a prayer, do some meditation, whatever you do to just relax and, and turn off your phone, turn off your laptop, turn off all this, you know, these electronics and all this shit that your eyes are just attached to. Turn it off for like 20 minutes and just lay down and meditate. Do, do something to make you relax. And all of these things will help you control your cortisol levels, control your stress, and be much further along your journey to uh, achieving, uh, you know, more muscle, less fat, healthy body, and, and, and your fitness goals and stuff. Okay, guys, so I hope you enjoyed the video. Comment our section, you know, let us know what you want to see next. Like the video, subscribe, share it, help other people, and um, we'll get you guys mm, soon. I'm trying to do a video every week, every two weeks to really get it to you guys. So, um... Once again, guys, thank you so much for the support. God bless you guys. Take care, all right? Hove Hustle Fitness.